We have more live sport for you on Easter Sunday. Rugby Union at two. The Tetley Bitters Cup semi-final. Wasps against Gloucester at three live cricket. Continuing coverage of the fourth test between the West Indies and Australia. And at 5.30 live football from Scotland. St Johnston against Rangers. It's the Royal Albert Hall tonight. And the WBO World Super Bantamweight title fight is our top of the bill here. Paul Lloyd does not take an easy job. If there's a difficult one, he can take instead. And the challenger from the northwest up against the Mexican champion, the big hitting, battled hardened Marco Antonio Barrera. We'll hear from Glenn and Ian after Mike Goodall completes the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials appointed for this contest by the World Boxing Organization, President Francesco Valcasal. For this contest, the supervisor, Mr. Louis Perez of Puerto Rico. The British Boxing Board of Control Supervisor, Mr. Leonard Nipparid, QPM, President of the British Boxing Board of Control. The timekeeper, Mr. Peter McCann of London, and the judges at ringside, Mr. John Coyle of Wolverhampton, Mr. Roy Francis of London, and Mr. Jose Rivera of Puerto Rico. And the referee in charge of the action this evening from New York in the United States of America, Samuel Verut. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tonight from London's premier venue, the Royal Albert Hall, live and exclusive on uh, Sky Sports, it's Big Fight Time. And tonight, Frank Warren proudly presents World Championship Boxing with a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the WBO Super Bantamweight Championship. Between introducing the boxers and firstly, Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the all red trunks, coming from El Ellesmere Port in Cheshire. He weighed in at 8 stone, 10 pound. Holds a 23 fight professional record, 19 wins, 13 by way of knockout, with 4 losses. He comes to the ring, the current British, Commonwealth and European Bantamweight Champion. Please welcome the challenger for the title, Paul Livewire. And across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the dark trunks trimmed with gold. He comes from Mexico and weighs in at 8 stone, 9 pound. He holds a 49 fight professional record, 47 wins, 35 coming by way of knockout with 2 losses. Tonight he competes in his 13th world title contest. He's the two times world champion, the current WBO Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Marco Antonio Barrera. <laughs> the referee, Mr. Samuel Babu, will now give his instructions to both boxers. Boxers, this is for the World WBO Championship, okay? I'm gonna call the night low from this point on down. You understand that? I'm gonna call low from this point down. I give you the instructions in your respective uh, dressing room. Then I'm gonna pregunta. Any questions here? Protect yourself at all times. Good luck to both of you. 12 three minute rounds for the WBO Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. 50th fight for Marco Antonio Barrera, his 13th at World Championship class. What a job it is for Paul Lloyd. Oh, and he's caught straight away with a right hand from Barrera, making his first ever appearance in Europe, never mind Great Britain, regarded as one of the big names of world boxing, Barrera in the black trunks. Lloyd moving up a weight, although he used to fight as a super bantamweight in a previous part of his career. British Commonwealth European champion at Bantam, but this is another level. And already Barrera is getting through with good punches. He's very, very accurate. And he just there lost his balance for a bit on that far side. The legs just seemed to go momentarily of Lloyd. And he sacked against the ropes, but quickly recovered happily for him. Barrera, who fights with this stone face, has this controlled menace about him. 
particularly hurtful to the body. And Lloyd here struggling to cope with his speed and variety early on here. Oh, and Lloyd looking very disorganised and a little bewildered by the sheer class of the man. Oh, he doesn't know where he is. He's going to be stopped this, I think, inside a round. Referee from New York, Sam Virouette. Look how badly marked up he is already, Paul Lloyd. He looks in too deep here, doesn't he? Barrera barely missed with a shot. He really is in too deep. This is too tough for Lloyd. Barrera, I think, will have this over with very soon. Oh, it's horribly one-sided. Surely Paul Lloyd can find no way back from this. He's taken a heavy pounding in the opening round. His face already looks as if it's done 12 rounds. Well, his legs are very wide apart. He's really trying to grip the canvas here. Just as well he went down because I think the referee would have had to stop him if he'd stayed on his feet. Look at these shots. They're coming from all over the place. Well, I think the referee should jump in now. He's took some heavy punches. He's struggling to keep his feet on the floor. He has been badly hurt there. He did get in with a left hook there to Paul Lloyd. His face is already a red mask from these lashing, lethal shots from this class Mexican. Oh, look at the way he sets himself with the body shots. It's horrible to behold, really. Lloyd is showing amazing courage already, really, to stay in there and on his feet with this. He must feel like the survivor of a multiple injury road crash. Goodness me, this is one of the most one-sided rounds I've ever seen without the fight getting stopped. How did he get through that, Paul Lloyd? Why did he get through it? Well, in, in fairness, I mean, he's very tough. We know that, but for me, the referee should have jumped in. He's taken a terrible beating in there. I mean, that really was terrible. He's badly cut. I'd be surprised if they let him go for the next round because he's just going to get more of the same. His pride will tell him to go on, but I don't know, Jimmy Tibbs is in there. And so is Mick Williams, and they've got two cut men, by the way, tonight. They're looking at all the cuts. It's off. It's over after one round. No more. Marco Antonio Barrera. We only saw three minutes of him, but that was about all we needed to see. Last time he fought, he had Naz's next written on his shorts. They seem to have forgotten that campaign for the moment. But, uh, Reiki, he's good, isn't he? He was terrific. I mean, that was... You couldn't, you know, he was just so painful to watch. He really did put, inflict so much pressure, so much accurate punching. You can see he's really sickened already by this. It's only his toughness and bravery that got him through that first round. But a class act, he was almost just, chilly just to, to watch him in. He was just cut to bits as well by all this, Lloyd. It was really a fighter who's good at European level but moving from that kind of level up into the very highest world class with one of the best men around was all too much for Paul Lloyd and really it was a very compassionate decision to make sure that he didn't come out for the second round I'm really really glad that didn't happen well I, I said they shouldn't and they didn't and I think that's down to the, the good cornerman then in there and they knew they weren't going to let Paul Lloyd see any more of that because you know, he barely threw a competitive punch himself. It was just all Barrera. And uh, he just went about his work. Very, very chilling composure. Put his shots together, never wasted one. Body and head. He had poor Paul Lloyd bent double there, trying to hang on in. Some of those body punches brought me back to those days when Carlos Palomino was sinking in those shots against John H. Tracy. It was wince on the look of the face of Paul Lloyd. Well, he seems to be as all right as you can be after surviving three minutes of that from Barrera. And this is a fellow who was beaten twice by Junior Jones, who seems to be uh, his jinx fighter, but everything else Barrera has won. What a British debut.
It was frightening to behold. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first round, uh, on the doctor's advice, the referee stops the contest to the winner and still WBO Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, uh, Marco Antonio Barrera. So now we know what all the fuss has been about. 50 and counting from Marco Antonio Barrera. And he's only just 25 years of age. Could be a decent fighter in the years ahead. Yeah, well, they said before the, the, the first bell that this, this little fellow was phenomenal and they proved that. I'll tell you, Paul, I've never been so delighted to see a fighter badly cut in the first round of a fight as I was tonight. Totally delighted, because make no mistake, this little fella here would not have quit. He would have gone out for the second round, make no mistake. But uh, let's face it, we didn't want to say before the fight that Paul probably he shouldn't have been in there with Pereira. He went in, he did his best, but thankfully out, you know, carrying his shield, but with no disgrace. But this little fella is something special. Just did fear for Lloyd for that reason, because we've seen him so game and determined up to European Championship level, but there's a, a sort of a thrilling authority about a, a true world-class boxer, I have to say that. Yeah, there's and a gulf of a difference. Bill, gulf of a difference between European level and, and world level, especially we're talking about one of the best world champions in the world. There are plenty of people around at the moment who are holding world titles, not in this man's league. This man is something special. Well, he's making his way slowly out with his world title belt intact and who knows how much longer he'll go on to reign at the super bantamweight division and Ian is getting ready to have a word with this Mexican star well Marco that was uh, that was a very very impressive performance did you really want to put on a big show in England well it is so that yes no uh, Paulo is very good fighter maybe all the people like it they fight because very short but it's a very good fighter. But you seem to be at your most destructive there tonight. Yes, yes, this is my plan. The work, I come in to throw punches all the time, to run. I don't know how many rounds, but I come in to throw punches all the time. What do you see now as your future? You had those two defeats against Junior Jones. Where do you want to go and who do you want to fight now? Well, I don't know exactly. Now I go to take relax because I work very hard for this fight. Maybe in the future, I want to fight with Nassim Hamed. I come in to fight Nassim Hamed here in England, no problem. All the people, it's very good people. Well, have you got a message? Because I've got a feeling that Prince Nassim Hamed might be watching this tonight. Have you got a message for him? Well, Nassim, I am here to fight with you, wherever you want. Soon? You want the fight to happen soon? Every, in, in, in London, in... When he won, no problem. You would move up to featherweight to do that, would you? Up to nine, uh, up to the nine stone, 126 pounds. Well, why not? This very good fighter. Why not? Maybe December or next year, up the way, 26 pounds for fight with Nassim Hamed. Why not? It's very good fight. Okay, we look, we look forward to seeing that. Tell me one other thing. Clear up one other thing. Do you actually play football in the Mexican second division as well? Yes. Now, now. I play football soccer every Saturday after to to fight I arrive in Mexico to play football soccer but you're better at boxing I bet <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> thanks a lot Marco let's bring in Frank Warren if he's here ah, we can find Frank Frank um, you have a promotional um, agreement with Marco Antonio Barrera um, Prince Nati Mohammed is no longer part of, of your team could this fight happen? It would be a bit intriguing, wouldn't it? I know Nez is at home watching this fight, and <laughs> yeah. you know Nez is going to fight you. Come, let's let's get the fight on. It's a good fight. The fans would want to see it. He's a fighting machine. I know you're a fighting machine. I know you fear no one. He doesn't. Let's get the fight on. Big fight in this country. A real opponent, not like Paul Engel. A real fight. If it isn't Nez, where would you like to see him go? He's just going to just keep fighting. He's going to keep fighting. We're going to keep keep, uh, keep putting uh, Marco on keep showing his talents to the public and uh, the public at the end of the day would call for the fight but you remember when he signed a deal with, with HBO they said that Barrera Marco Barrera was one of the opponents well nobody spoke to me about it but I'm telling you he can be one of those opponents we would love the fight I tell you what he frightened me tonight and I was only sitting at ringside thanks a lot fellas <laughs> if Barrera says it's a free kick when he's playing football it's a free kick
When we come back, we've got more important title action tonight. The British light middleweight title fight also on here tonight. Ensley Bingham against Nicky Thurbin. We'll show you that next.